Let's say you needed a variable to store programming languages. You might define each programming language as a separate variable like this, for example. And this is fine if you only have one or two programming languages, but then it does not look or feel right because we're kind of repeating the variable name programming language and then appending the index to it one, two, three, and then later if we get more programming languages, then we're gonna have four, five, six, and so on. When you notice a repetition like that in your variable names, it usually means that you need to structure your data in a different way. There is a better way of doing this and it's called arrays. Arrays are just a list of values where those values can be of multiple data types. So let's refactor this into an array and let's call the variable programming languages and we define an array by using square brackets. So this is an empty array and then we could put any values in here. So I'm going to put PHP comma Java comma Python. Now I put them in single quotes but you could also put them in double quotes. It is up to you but I personally prefer single quotes unless I need to use a variable within the quotes. There's also another way to define an array which is an older way and that is by using array keyword and then parentheses instead of the brackets. So we could do it like this and this would work. I prefer the bracket syntax though so that's what I'll be using throughout this course. Let's get rid of this and let's talk about how you would access each element in the array. Just like strings, arrays by default are indexed by numbers starting at zero. So that means that this is at index zero, this is at index one, and this is at index two. As you may remember in the previous video about strings, we were able to access individual characters using the zero based index and square brackets. So if we had something like name equals geo, we were able to do echo name square bracket one, and this would print out the second character in the string, which is I. Same applies to arrays. You're able to access individual elements using the zero based indexes. So if you wanted to access the first element in the array, you could do echo programming language is zero, and this would print PHP, you could access the second element and that would print Java and so on. Note that unlike strings in arrays you can't access elements from the back of the array using negative numbers. So going back to the string example we were able to do something like echo name minus one and this would give us the last character which is O. Now you cannot do the same thing with arrays. If we try to do the same thing here we would get undefined array key warning and that's because a value does not exist at index negative one. We only have index zero one and two. So the number right here in the brackets is what we call index or a key. You're able to define your own keys in arrays in PHP and we'll talk about that in a minute but if you don't define the keys PHP will automatically assign the numeric keys starting at zero. You are basically able to treat arrays as different types of data structures like stacks, queues, collections, hash tables and so on which makes arrays very powerful. If you try to access a key that does not exist in array you will get a warning and you saw that before when we try to echo out at index negative one and if we try to do that again we get warning now same will happen if you try to access a uh, index three for example because even though we have three elements it starts at zero so we have zero one two and the third key does not exist so this will result in the same error also note that that even though you get warning the value returned from accessing undefined uh, key is actually null so if you var dump this or you assigned it to a variable you would get a null along with the warning. To avoid such errors we can actually check if the item exists at that specific key or an index using eset function. So for example we could do var dump eset programming languages and let's do zero and this will print true. Now if we did three this would return false. If you don't exactly know that an item exists in an array at that index you could check first if it exists and then try to access it. You can mutate the array and update the value at a specific index. For example what if we wanted to change Java to C++. For example, we can do programming languages and then specify the index of Java, which is one, and then set that to C++. And if we refresh, it will print nothing because I forgot to echo that out. So let's echo programming languages one, and this will print C++. We can also use var dump or print R to see the contents of the array. So we could do var dump programming languages, and this will print an entire array. And this also includes the types. So a less verbose way to do this is by using print R and let's remove this echo from here and this looks better. If you want to get extra fancy and make it look even better you can surround it with uh, HTML pre-tags 
and now it looks more readable. To get the length of the array, we can use function called count and we can do echo count and pass the array variable here. And this will give you number of elements in that array. So this should give us three. Let's remove C++ from here and just add C++ as a new element to the array. We can do that by using square bracket syntax again, but instead of assignment, we do that before the assignment. So programming languages, square brackets, and then put the value that you want to push to an array. So we can can do C++ here and now if we repeated the same thing right after let's add some break line here we refresh and now we have C++ as the last element and the count of array is 4 so this syntax here basically just pushes elements to the end of the array another way of pushing element to an array is using array underscore push an array push just mutates the array. It means that uh, the variable we pass here is passed by reference. So anything array push does to that array will actually modify the original array, which is here. So we could pass that array as the first argument and then we could pass multiple arguments here to push multiple elements to array. And let's remove that if we refresh we have C++, C and Go right here. As mentioned before, you are able to define and name your keys. The key has to be either a string or an integer. When you have named keys in an array, it's called an associative array. So for example, instead of doing var dump programming languages zero, wouldn't be nice if we could do something like var dump programming languages PHP, which would give us some more information about that specific language. And that is entirely possible in PHP because you're able to define your own keys. So let's refactor the above array to contain custom keys. So we're going to redefine that array called programming languages and we define the key before the value. So we set PHP and then equal sign and a greater than sign and then the value. So we can set this to the current stable version of the language. So this would be 8.0 and then Python would be 3.9. Let's print the array and it prints the array and these are the keys now. So now you're able to access the array elements using those keys. So programming languages PHP will print the version of the PHP and that is 8.0. If you try to access a key that does not exist, you will again get the warning. We could also add other programming languages to this array by assigning the value to the specific key. So let's add a programming language Go with this version number. So we could print this out and we get it right there. This would of course work for indexed arrays as well, where instead of specifying the string keys, you would specify the numeric keys. And now the cool thing about arrays is that you could access elements by specifying the keys into variables. So for example, instead of hard coding this here, you could put this into a variable called new language and then define new language as go, and this will return the same result. Also, as I mentioned before, arrays can have values of multiple different data types. It can have strings, booleans, integers, floats, and it can even have arrays as values, which makes it possible to have multi-dimensional arrays. Let's refactor this code to have a bit more information than a version number because you could have multiple versions, right? So let's get rid of this. And instead of setting PHP to a specific version number, we can set it to another array. And then this array can have its keys and values. And now I'm just going to fill in these fields. All right, so let's print this on the screen and we get this detailed information now. Let me zoom out a bit and we see the creator, extension, website, whether it's open source or not. So as you notice here, we have multiple data types. We have strings, we have booleans, we have integers, we have floats, and we also have arrays itself. So as you can see, representing data in such form can be very powerful and even more powerful when you learn how to work with arrays using loops and built-in functions, which will be covered in later videos. Accessing multidimensional arrays are actually pretty simple. You just specify the key of the dimension you want to go into. So for example, if you want to access the extension or the website, you just need to chain the keys. So you have PHP and then website. So we would go here and we would do echo programming languages and PHP and then specify another key website. And this will print the website right here. Same goes for the subarray here. We could access the first version in the list and print its uh, release date. We could do echo PHP versions and then we could access the first element by using the zero based keys because we don't have the keys specified and PHP assigns the numeric indexes by default. So they would be zero. And then we could access the release date using the release date key. And if we print that on the screen, we 
you get the correct date. If you mess this up and you put a key that does not exist in any of these arrays, so for example if you put 3 in here instead of 0, you'll get warning. And now you're getting two warnings because the first warning is telling you that array key 3 does not exist and then second warning is telling you that you're trying to access release date on something that is not an array. Because when you get this error, right, when you're getting undefined array uh, error, the value of it is actually no. If we var dump this, you will see that the value of it is no. If you have multiple keys that are the same, the last one will overwrite the others. So for example, if we have array and then we do print r array, we see that the element at index one is actually baz and not bar. That's because baz had the same key as bar and it overwrote. Also, the keys have to be either strings or integers, though PHP will try to cast the keys when possible. So let's change this array a bit. And what's going to happen here is that there will only be one value and it will equal to D. And if you refresh the page, we get that one value and the key is one. That's because true gets cast into one. One is one and overwrites A with B. Then string one overwrites the integer one with C. And then 1.8 gets cast to integer. And when floats get cast to integer, the decimal gets removed. And this also equals to one. And therefore it overwrites everything before and the value is just D. That's why we get only a single element here. Here. Also, nulls as keys are cast into empty strings. So for example, if we set this to E and we refresh, this is just an empty string. And then we can access that the same way. Echo array empty string, and this will print E. Or we can access it echo array null, and it will print E. So these keys in PHP are not required. As you saw before, you could have arrays without defining keys. It even allows you to only have keys on some elements. When there is no key, PHP will automatically assign the integer key, which is just an increment of the largest previous integer key. And if there was no previous integer key, then it starts at zero, which is what we see here is happening. And that's the default behavior. Let's change this to letters. And again, the indexes are automatically assigned. But if we were to define a key for one of them, for example, define 50 here and assign it, now we have 0, 1, 50, and this is the biggest integer key, so the next one will be 51, 52, and so on. And if you refresh the page, that's exactly what's happening. So it's something to be aware of when you're setting the numeric keys on only some of the elements of the array. There are a few ways you could remove elements from arrays. One way is by using a function called array pop, which basically just removes the last element from an array and returns it. So if we did echo array pop array, this would return E and remove it from the original array. So if we refresh, we get E, and then if we print our array here, we see that E is no longer there. It could also remove the first element of the array by using a function called array shift, which will remove the letter A from the array. So if we refresh, we get A, and A is no longer in the array. Notice here that when we removed it from the beginning, the array got re-indexed, and we're going to talk about re-indexing next, but before removing element, we saw that A's index was zero, so when we remove this, you would think that value B would retain the index one, but that's not what's happening when you use array shift, it will re-index the array. Also note that there is no longer 50 as the key for the C because array got re-indexed and the key of the C is one. It will only re-index the numeric key. So if you had a non-numeric key here, for example, foo equals to E, this would not get re-indexed. So if you refresh, this will remain same. Another way of removing element from an array is by using a function called unset, and you already know what unset is because we use that to destroy variables but when used on array and you specify the index it will remove that element from the array if you don't specify the index it will destroy entire array so for example if we do unset array and then print our array right after we get undefined variable array because the variable gets destroyed if we specify the key here so let's specify 50 this will remove the element c from the array and if we refresh we no longer see the element c we could also remove multiple elements by specifying multiple arguments arguments. So you could do unset array 50 and then unset array 1 and this should remove C and B from the array. If we refresh, that works. Note that when you're removing elements from array using unset, the array will not be re-indexed. So for example, if you were to remove just the second element in the array, which is B, the maximum integer on the key will be retained and it will not be re-indexed. So if we do that and we do print R, we see the first element is at 0, the next one is at 50, then 51, 52, and so on. Let me show you a better example. So if we have 1, 2, and 3 as array elements and we remove all of them, 
and we print the array now we have an empty array but if we were to push another element to an array using the square bracket syntax for example one you would think that this would get pushed at the zeroth index but it will actually get pushed at the third index in the array the maximum integer key is retained and the maximum integer key in this case is two and when we add another element to array the next integer key would be two plus one which is three and this is essentially same thing as setting the value to three and if we refresh we see that the key of the value one is three so let's talk about casting now let's delete all this and create a variable with some scalar value like five for example and then try to cast that to an array and this will actually turn this value into an array and this will become the first element in the array so if we refresh that we see that the value five is the first element if we change this to a string the same thing will happen if you're casting a null to array it will just create an empty array so if we refresh we have an empty array and before we wrap up this video i want to show you another way you could check if key exists in an array and that is by using a function called array key exists and you specify the key as the first argument and then pass the array as the second argument so let's define an array here called a equals one and b equals to null and let's do var dump array key exists a an array and this will print true because it exists and on the bottom let's also use is set and i will show you what the difference is let's do var dump and this is also true so the difference here is that array key exists will tell you if the key actually exists in the array or not while is set will tell you if the key exists and it's not null so in the case of the key b here the b's value is null if we were to check that with array key exists this would return true and but if we were to check it with the is set it would actually return false because the value is null so if we refresh this we get true and we get false so it's just something to be aware of and be cautious when you're using is set but sometimes you may want to know if the key truly exists in the array whether it's null or not and in that case is set would not work and it may result in some mysterious bugs that are hard to find thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up share and subscribe and i will see you on the next video where we'll talk about operators.